All right. Well, welcome. It's hard for us to see who's joining us. So if you're joining us, just say hi. Appreciate it if you would. So let us know you're out there. If you have any questions at all, just please feel free to fire away. Again, what's your flipping problem is uh, our show we have here for you today. And uh, Amber and I, like I said, took two weeks off during the holidays. Hope you guys had a great holiday. Yeah, Happy New Year. Yeah, happy. Quite a quite a first six days, haven't we had this year? Oh, my Lord. Here we go. I guess 2021 has the top 2020. Yeah, apparently we're going to have it. Yeah, right. It's trying to, it's trying to it's win. trying to outdo it. Oh, my Lord. Here's what it is. So and good. And we're only seven days in. Yeah, lovely. All right. Hi, guys, David. If you're joining us. Hey, David. You guys join us, just please put your name and say hi in the chat box. We appreciate it. Again, if you have any questions at all, please fire away. You got us here live today. And we'd love to answer any questions that you have about uh, about uh, real estate, about flipping. Anything that you have about that, we'd love to help you out. So I'll start out with a couple questions that we had that were uh, private messages to us throughout the week. And um, uh, here we go. So first question was, how long, you, How long? Uh, for some reason, I didn't write, out, write down who's, who wrote this. Um, how long have you been flipping? So our story goes back. Amber and I, we flipped our first house in 2007. We bought it in 07. And then we actually sold it in 08. So that's when our that's when our first house that we did, right? Yep. And we yeah you know, we bought it in 07. Uh, we bought it through a we were able to have a mortgage on it. Uh, we had good credit, but didn't we didn't report any income because we were, we had a home based business. So we were able to get what's called a no doc loan. We got a no doc loan on it, and that's how we got started. And then we went from there, and we sold that at the end of 08. We're down to our last you know if you haven't heard the story, we're down to our last fourteen hundred dollars or something like that in anything, cash, credit, credit cards loans from people we were done our last 1400 bucks and we had two mortgage payments coming due actually three mortgage payments coming due and we had to figure out this so we had the house we had or we had two houses we had plus the house we were flipping so a little bit scary at the end but we pulled it out yeah so. yeah so we i think we we sold that in the spring of 08 and then in yeah. 08 we did what three more i, I think, think three more yeah three more that year but that's when funding went away so when funding yeah. went away that year that's when we had to go out and start to build our private lender base. But it's also when we kind of got smart because um, I always kind of thought that we had to do the work ourselves to make any money. And so the first three houses that we did, we actually did do the majority of the work. I think we hired out a little bit of painting and the hardwood floors. Yeah. Um, maybe the countertops too. Yeah. Um, but then we were wanting to kind of ramp up and, you know, you can only be in one place at a time. So if, if you're wanting to do more than one project at a time and you're doing the work yourself... We also hired my best friend Brian, right? So Brian, my my, my boy Brian Schaefer, he I had him come out and do the tile work for you know he's a perfectionist too. God bless him, he's a perfectionist, and I had him come out and do the tile work. And I ended up doing it for nothing, you know. I told him I paid him four hundred bucks or something. He's like, jeez, but we ended up doing that, and yeah. that's we you know we started learning to hire stuff out, right? Yeah, and even if you don't have more than one project going at a time, you're still better off to hire the work out because yeah. the time it takes you to do it versus hiring a contractor to do it. Save yourself all the headache and the backache, literal backache. Yeah. And uh, just just hire it out. Yeah. So that's that was our story. So we started back at 07, and then it was one house, then three houses. Then we did, I think, seven the next year. And we actually grew too fast the next year. went to 20. Went from seven houses in one year. These are all renovations, by the way, seven to 20. And then from 20, we kind of st we stayed at that range for a little while. Then we started getting to the 40, 50 range. And then it was a few years ago, we started with a, you know, 80, 90, 100. Now we'll, we'll do over 100 deals this year. So, so um, Tom, great question. Hi, guys. Seriously need to need step-by-step -step starter info. What is step one and then what? So there's no way we can possibly cover that in a 20 or 30 minute. I have a step. I have a step one without without yeah. trying to be a self promoter. Come to our home flipping workshop. Uh, end of go to homeflippingworkshop.com and it's January 22nd through 24th. We just made a promotion video today that said there's three steps getting started. Number one, buy your ticket. Yeah, right? we you, just, we you, just you did have, that today. You have to have the education, and that's not yeah. going to happen in a matter of a few minutes. The workshop is three full days of like meat and potatoes yeah. i mean it's it's good stuff man some of you guys some of you guys are, are on here i know i've been to our workshop you can answer that question let, the, let yep. them know what you think about the workshop yeah so david been, let them know what you think jim yeah it's been been an amazing so was it was it was it worth it for the three days <laughs> yeah right it's 59 bucks so you can't hardly beat it it's really yeah, the it, real investment is time yeah the, the 59 bucks really just covers us we actually federal express you a package a toolbox yeah we, we i'm sorry we call it a we call it the home flipping workshop toolbox it's a Federal Express package. And so it comes out to you, it's got everything that you need. So it was, uh, yeah, David, thanks, man. So yeah, that just kind of covers us shipping that out to you and uh, you know, a little bit of our time there. So that's all that is. But yeah, we spend three days and really dive into everything that we do and, and help you out. 
you know what's funny so our next question is will you tell us more about your airbnbs which kind of ties into our first question how long you've been flipping so um i'm i'm actually working on uh furnishing our latest airbnb and i'm trying to do it less expensive than the other airbnbs i've done so i've been on marketplace i don't know i'm not enjoying doing it this way but um, I've been on Facebook Marketplace trying to find, you know, used furniture. And I feel like I'm flipping furniture because I'm I'm negotiating. I'm throwing these lowball offers at people for their bedroom sets. Yeah. And then knowing I'm going to, like, paint it and basically rehab it and make it look nicer for the Airbnb. <laughs> so well, I'm, they're probably I'm asking, to flip you're, you're talking about buying the furniture for no, it. No, I know. You, yeah. I know. It was just. The, Air, the, Air, the Airbnbs, we started that a year ago. We actually did a house across the street from us. We're going to flip it. We're going we're gonna to turn it into a rental. And um, what's the damage on the workshop? It's a whole fifty nine dollars. It's fifty nine dollars. So it's a huge investment. So you know, and at, and what we do, Tom, is at that at that workshop, we spend the entire weekend, and we spend three days. What we do is we do take applications, and we do pick a handful of people to work with on more of a one on one basis at the end of that workshop. And so we go over all the details and what that's what that looks like and everything. But we go over that. And it, that's that's only on a on a um, uh, interview process only. It's not like we're it's not a sales fest all weekend or anything like that. It's not like you're getting pressure. It's not like a timeshare. We hate those things. So it's really just you're there, you're learning. We do give a lot of meat. I mean, day one, we dive into you and the foundation of building your business. We dive into how to find off market deals. We, do, we dig into how to fund your deals. We go through like eight or nine different steps on how to raise money with good credit and with no credit. We spend, we actually do a virtual tour on Saturday where we actually go through a house and show you how to do an evaluation with our home flipping evaluator that we give you for free. So you get that as well. That's, and that piece of paper is overnighted to you, plus you have a link on how to go get them for free after. So that's all there too. Yeah, and if you go to the Home Flipping Workshop page on Facebook, like in the search, just type in Home Flipping Workshop, read the reviews. Those are real people. Yeah. Yeah, and we, we ask people at the event, if we think if we think we're worth it, give us a review. And um and we do we do compensate them for that. So people say if you if you if you want a great review, you know, we'll give you we'll give you we used to give lottery tickets, but now we give I think an Amazon gift card for ten bucks or something just to say thank you because most people today like to complain. If you go on social media, it's mostly just complaining and fighting about politics. That's just what Facebook's become. But we want to make sure people uh we, we say listen, if you if you think we're worth it, go ahead. But you'll see massive paragraphs from people, hundreds and hundreds of people giving us a five star review. So it's uh, again I'm not here to self promote that, but that's you asked, so that's that's what it is. So Hey, those of you that are hopping on on we're on Google Chrome so that we can use the computer to go live. Um but we can't see who's on here. So say hi in the chat box. Yeah, love to. And uh, so we can you know, we can know who is on here. Yeah. So tell us more about your Airbnb. So we we got into that a little over a year ago was our first one. Um, pure pure gamble. Yep. Yeah, and I wasn't like gung ho on it at all. Like I, I was. I didn't think it was gonna work. Well, because you know. Rotterdam and Albany, New York, is not like a vacation destination. It's well, not let's like talk something... about that. I know. I'm going to. Would you let me? Sorry. Yes, dear. Um, you know, it's not like it's not like people say, "Hey, let's go to Albany for a vacation," but people do come here for work. They come here for family. They come here for graduations. They come here because their aunt is sick and they, you know, she's going to be in the hospital. They come here to visit their family we, workers yeah workers come here that's crews. Kind of, yeah, yeah we have work crews that come here uh proctors is not far from us it's a it's a theater well when we yeah used pre, to have, when we used to have pre uh, COVID, we had a whole theater booked up for several weeks of uh, people that were coming for the theater yeah, so. performers you know not now yeah now but, it's now it's people coming from the city right people right now people are coming to escape from the city we were booked up all summer long i think at that point our first one we opened, I think it was like last November, December, and since then, like through the summer, we had uh, four and then opened five. Yeah. We did not have one, hardly one open day on our calendar. It was so booked up. We just we just had um, some GE execs book one of our houses for seven months. Yeah. So on a house that we would normally get maybe fourteen hundred, fourteen fifteen hundred dollars a month for, like as a traditional rental, we're getting thirty five hundred dollars a month for. Yeah. So that yeah, there's a few expenses you have to pay for your own. You have to pay for the internet service, right? You have to give them Wi-Fi. You have to pay for uh, the power trash on the house, so a couple hundred trash pickup. So you're you're three four hundred bucks in, in expenses every month. But we're pulling in thirty five hundred bucks to four thousand dollars in some houses every month. So it's pretty amazing. So yes, yeah, so, well first so, Jim, I, I read Jim's while while I was talking. I'm very multi talented, Jim. I was talking and reading at the same time. So in this market, so that, so if you guys don't see what his question is, so he had two cash deals that I was going to go after that went pending under contract within hours. Didn't get a chance to even get in the door. Is that normal? 
Um, why would the seller not do a highest and best offer? So in this market, it's hot. Like in this, in this, in the entire country right now, the real estate market is out of control. I, I don't know. The interest rates are so low right now. They're historically low, and they're probably going to stay low for a while is what we're hearing. Again, my crystal ball is broken, but the market is hot. So you have to get in there. If you're going in just MLS deals, you'll struggle there a little bit. You really want to find the off-market deals. That's really where you want to get to because off-market deals is where you find your best money, and you're going to have less competition. If you go on the open market, like on the MLS where everybody posts their house, there are going to be a lot of other vultures out there looking for those deals. And my opinion is people overpay like crazy right now. We've had houses that we thought we'd, we'd pay. We had one house we looked at not too long ago. We did a Facebook Live on it, actually. We did a house. We were, we were, our offer was like 58 A, a seasoned investor here paid 80 I'm like, what are you, nuts? But whatever. Good luck to you. You know what I mean? He's going to. If he's happy trying to make ten grand on a house like that, he's hoping that it'll be good, and maybe he will. But man, for us, not not worth it. But so, Jim, you want to? Why would they not do highest and best? Because the seller can do whatever they want to do. Some sellers don't want the headache, they don't want the hassle, they just want the best offer, and they walk away. It drives me crazy when they don't bid it up either. Like I don't know why they don't do that, but they don't they don't do it. Um, but you want to get in the door to make your offer look different, depending on the situation. If it's an estate kind of a house. Write a letter, just a simple letter saying, "Hey, we'd love to, you know, please accept our offer. We'd love to um, work with you. If you know, if it's an estate sale, say we'd love to invite you back when we're done to see the finished product. You know, please consider our offer. We're a small family-owned company. You know, I've got my family, my kids, my my sons in high school. You know, whatever you, whatever your situation is, you can make yourself a person instead of a number. Sometimes, if your number is close to somebody else's, they might counter you and not somebody else. Very true. Because if you get another offer where they're like, they're like, well, this guy just offered me 50 grand. What a jerk. Well, if you say, well, listen, I, I'm offering 40, 48 grand, but here I'm a family. I'm a family-owned business. You know, here's why Here's why I have my number. Don't make it too long so you bore them to death, but make it enough so they kind of know who you are, and they'll read it. And hopefully if they read it, it might make you stand out to somebody else. You know, so hopefully that hopefully that helps, Jeff. Yeah, Glenn and I have gotten a lot of deals over the years that way. Um, and if if you have to go through an agent, it makes it a little more challenging because you can't meet the people face to face. But just by adding that letter and making yours a personal offer instead of, you know, it's just another contract in front of yeah. their face, it it really can make a difference. Uh, is it Al Albana or Albana? I hope I'm saying that name. Albana. Albana. We just answered that question before you came out, but I'll, I'm happy to answer it again. Come to one of our workshops. So if you don't know much about us. Um, um, good, Jim. You're welcome. Um, if you don't know much about us, you can go to glennandamber.com. That's just glennandamber.com, um, and you'll you'll learn a lot about us. But we put on a home flipping workshop, and there's one coming up here uh, January 20. I think it's the 24th. Whatever the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, at 24th through 26th or 22nd through 24th. 20, I don't know. 22nd through 24th, January. 22nd through 24th, and that's it's $59, and it's three full days. Go to homeflippingworkshop.com. And check it out and, and come join us and you'll see. We spend three days diving into all the details to help you be successful and learn about how to, you know, reach your goals financially with real estate investing. Because our, our real motto and what we talk about in all of our marketing and what we say is that we help we help everyday people create wealth through real estate investing, right? So we're using real estate as a vehicle to go from point A to point B. That's all we're doing is saying, listen, I want to be here. I want a better retirement. I want a better house. I want a better income. I want to go on vacation more. I want to put my kids through school. You know, whatever your reason is, real estate just gets you there, right? Real estate just takes you from one to the other. Nick, thank you, buddy. I appreciate that. Yeah, the, we have a great time on our workshops for sure. So our Airbnbs now, we've got about uh, seven right now. We're going to have, we'll, we're now we have three more that are in the works. Yeah. Well, we're actually converting some of our rentals because we're in New York State where the you know, tenants don't have to pay rent now, apparently. <laughs> don't get me going on that, but it is uh, it is what it is. So um, next one is, next question that came, if you guys have any questions, please put them in the chat box. We'd love to do it. We're here till, uh, we're here till 530. So any questions you have, we'd love to do this. And again, we do this every Thursday. We haven't been here for the past two Thursdays because it was Christmas Eve and then New Year's Eve. And so we weren't here for that, but... Um, New Year's, and even my birthday, so I was a New Year's baby. Got to mention that. So, I turned fifty-two this past year. Ouch! And he's got the glasses on this week. Guys. I know, I know. I got the my. I went. But to he the, looks good in them. I went to the yeah, but I went to the chi to chiropractor. <laughs> went to the chiropractor to get my eyes fixed. He's getting old too. Clearly, I'm not too smart either. So I went to the I went to the eye doctor, and I have twenty fifteen vision. So I have fantastic long term vision. It's just the reading that's starting to go. He said, well. Nothing you can do for that, buddy. You're just turning, you're just 52. So the question is, what's it like working as a couple? 
And how do you manage a work-life balance? That's a very loaded question. That's a very, very loaded question. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate the glad. Thank you. Glad you like the glasses. So, um, yeah, what's like working as a couple? It's it's great. It depends on the day. It's great and it's horrible. It's all the same. <laughs> but most of the time, it's great, right? Yeah. I think it depends on the couple. So for for us, you know, for us, we complement each other, right? I'm a I'm a type A visionary. Um, I'm kind of an off the charts visionary. That's what I see, and and uh, I look I can look down the road and see what's coming, and um, it's just something I've always been able to do. And Amber is similar, but she has more what's called an integrator personality, where she likes she can dive in and sort of make my vision become a reality. Right? That's the best way to answer it, or no? Yeah, sure. So I'm going to shut the hell up and let her <laughs> answer the question because clearly I don't have the right answer. So go ahead, honey. Tell them what it's like to work as a couple. Oh, well, we fight right here on camera. So, Great. So for for us it, and. His description was right, although, um, and, and that's a good, perfect marriage for a company to work is to have a visionary and an integrator, but it didn't work so well, um, necessarily, me working for him. Uh, we're, we're more right. partners than we are, and, and so... Well, I, I didn't say you work for me. No, I know that, but the, 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 the way that description... You're not my employee. No. Um, so, so what? We're at the fire yet. So, what made it work for us was um, not only the twenty five thousand dollars and several years in therapy, but um, true story. Um, mm -hmm. But also defining our roles. So, in the beginning, when we started, you know, we used to all, you know, we played the blame game because you know we'd be like, I thought you were going to do that. No, I thought you were going to do that. Um, and so things would slip through the cracks. So it wasn't until we really defined our goals and said, All right, you're responsible for A, B, C, and I'm responsible for X, Y, Z that things started running more smoothly. And even with that being said, though, it's we, you still support each other within your roles, um, but you know what your responsibilities are. So that that's how we made it work, is, is just defining what it is that we were each responsible we for. We had veto power. That was a big thing, veto power. If one of us if one of us walked into a house, had a bad gut on something, we'd say, nah, I'm just out. I'm out. And we the other person had a couple, a couple tries to challenge it. But if we didn't have a good challenge and it wasn't going in the right direction, if you didn't get the person to change the other person, we just both walked away from it. We had to kind of, we kind of had to to honor that because sometimes, sometimes I can walk into a house and see the money. I know. Listen, I have to pay this much because here's the repairs. Here's what it will sell for. I can see that very clearly. Amber can walk into a house and her specialty is one that's not mine. She sees the the renovation. I know right. exactly what the house is going to look like before it's ever touched. Like, like I see the picture in my mind of what it's going to look like when it's done. Right. And that's not something that I see naturally. So as a partnership, that works really well. Right? So it's good. Nick, you said, are you still taking entries for the big flipping break? Totally spaced that email. Nick, we totally are. So we just talked to our marketing company today. They've got, uh, geez, I think about 100 entries or something. But please do. If you don't know what the big flipping break is, we are, um, uh, we are running a, a, a show, a new reality show. It's called the Big Flipping Break, and what it is is I don't even know where you go to sign up for it anymore. Maybe go to bigflippingbreak.com or thebigflippingbreak.com. Go to glennandamber.com. Or glennandamber.com. Yeah, go to glennandamber.com and there'll be a link on there. I don't know if there is or not. I'm pretty sure there is. Hey, well, Busa, make sure there's a link on there, okay? So if you know, if you see that, we need a, we need a link for the Big Flipping Break on the Glenn and Amber page to get people to uh, start signing up for that. So what happens is you send it a, you send it a, an entry and a video submission. And if we, uh, if the marketing company chooses you guys, what'll happen is we are going to help you find a house. We're going to give you all the money for the house. We're going to coach you through the renovation flipping process from A to Z, right through to you sell it. And at the end, we're going to split the profit with you. So can't hardly lose on that deal, right? You have personal coaching right in there from Amber and I through the whole process. And uh, that's what and we're going to do. And our money. And our money. Putting our money at risk, right? We're going to show you that we, we know what to do. We're going to help you do it. So if that's something that's of interest to you, by all means, uh, get that application in. We'd love to love to uh, to work with you. So it should so, be, be a lot of fun. Saul, so you're asking, how is the market in the capital area here? So, you know, the last several years, um, I the market has been great. Um now it's even now hotter it's, than great. It's like super yeah. hot. I yeah. mean, it. I mean, it's it's kind of crazy. Oh, thanks. There's the link to the to oh, apply go. for the big flipping break. Good. Um, yeah, it, the it's it's kind of insane how hot it is right now. I mean, houses, uh, our finished houses are selling in the first few days with multiple offers, over asking in a lot of cases. Um, even finding investment properties has been a little bit challenging lately, just because it's so it's so hot right now. Yeah, for sure. 
So, but again, any place in the country for the most part right now is very hot right now. How long it's going to last for? I don't know. I, you know, they're, they're, they are saying, the experts are predicting that the residential market will stay hot for a while, maybe even a couple of years. Because that helped the economy. And now, you know, again, we just had a massive change in leadership in the country, so it's hard to say what's going to happen with that. Every time there's a change, no matter what side you go from or what side you're on, every time there's a change, sometimes you can have a dip, right? Sometimes sometimes gas prices are high, sometimes they're low. Sometimes real estate is moving fast, sometimes it's moving slow. And so a lot of times it depends on policies and what they make and what they, if they make any changes and stuff. We don't know. We don't know what's going to happen until it happens, so we have to play that out. But right now, while it's hard, it's a time to jump. Without question, now is the time to get rolling, rocking and rolling. They always said the best time to real estate invest in real estate was 10 years ago. And the next best time, right now, right? Because right now will be 10 years from now in 10 years, right? So you have to start sometime. Um, all right. So next question was, do you need a contractor to flip a home? Do you need one? No. Uh, you can certainly do it yourself if you want to. But I'm telling you right now, I I wouldn't waste my time. I mean, I would always have a contract to do the work because I don't want to be stuck doing the labor. Unless you love it. If you love being a contractor, great. If you're doing it because you think you're saving money, you're not saving money. That, that And that's the big misconception is I don't want to pay a contractor to do something I can do myself. But the thing is, if you're doing this as a weekend warrior, especially, which is most people are at first um, because you probably have a job and you're trying to do this on the side to get it up and running, you're only able to work on that house on the evenings and weekends. So... It's going to take you, you know, what what would take a contracting crew four to six weeks to do is going to take you six months to a year. So the money that you spend in holding costs during that six months to a year eats up all of the profit that you would have had if you would just would have hired a contractor to begin with and gotten it done more quickly. If you're brand new on the call, you're not totally sure <laughs> what that is. Holding costs is you're paying interest in the loan, you're paying your mortgage. utility, yep, your mortgage, you're paying uh, utilities, you're paying um, uh, taxes, which... In good old upstate New York, where, where we are, it's about five grand a year just to have a little nothing house, right? Yeah. So you're talking about four or five hundred bucks a month right there. So the, maintenance, lawn mowing, snow plowing, like you know, the the risk of somebody breaking in and stealing yep. your supplies. The longer you own a vacant house, the more risk you're going to have all the way around insurance, all that. So all those things are the, what it costs you to own a house. So you want to get in and get out as quick as possible, and if you have a contractor, it allows you to do that. Yeah, Lisa Mickey O. Hi, What's up, girl. Lisa. Is one of our successful students. Cool. Glad to have you here. Awesome. All right. So uh, next question I had. Again, if you have any more questions, please put them in the chat box. Again, you're here watching What's Your Flipping Problem with Glenn and Amber. We're here every Thursday at 5 o'clock. Uh, again, we weren't here the last two Thursdays because it was a holiday. But other than that, we'll be here every Thursday at 5 o'clock to answer your questions live. So feel free to either send the questions beforehand or come here live and ask the questions. We'd love to answer them for you. Um, how long did it take you to find a reliable contractor? <laughs> That's an ongoing problem. Yeah, that never changes. I mean, there it's it's. We had a good guy out of the gates, and then we expected too much from him. He's actually a good contractor. He's just grumpy as all hell. But we end up having a good guy, and then he ended up backing out, and it's uh, uh, we end up you know parting ways with him. But we we've been through I don't even I don't even want to venture a guess hundreds dozens for sure of contractors over the years. Just you know, the, it's a it's a love hate relationship. We do have some good ones now. We've had for for a while. And our, we have a project manager that manages the contractor. So that's his job is to worry about that. So, of course, right now he has COVID. So he's not around us, which no. is good. So um, he's not bad or anything. He just has it. But it is what it is. But, yeah, so it, take, it takes a long time. It's an ongoing process. It's really hard to find one mm -hmm. via referral because when you, when you have a good one and someone says, hey, do you have a contractor? You're like, nope, I'm good. You don't want to share that person with anybody because if you're a flipper, you're going to go from house to house usually. Right, so you, you're gonna you're be looking for your next house when you're finishing your first. house. You can house. get good referrals from friends or family, but if you're trying to get referrals from other investors, they're not gonna give up their good guys because they want to keep them themselves. We're trying to find a contractor for. I'm I'm trying to convert an attic into a bedroom in our own house, and our guys are so busy on our jobs that I don't want to take them away from a money making job to come work on my personal house. So um, I think I've met with like four different contractors and haven't hired any of them yet. So the question is, uh, yeah, looking at mortgage options, how many options is too many options? I, I think you have, you have to know your situation when it comes to mortgage. You know, when you're looking at when you're going to buy a, a property to flip, most of the time you're going to use a private money or cash or a hard money lender, right? So those are the things you want to do. So there, you want to get with one good. Like we have, we at our workshops, we actually introduce you to our. Uh, or our students, we actually introduce to our private money lenders and the, <clears throat> the brokers we work with. And it's good to have one or two, but don't don't have too many options. They're really, you just you want to find something that you trust, you can work with, it'll show up with the money, 
And yeah, we promote private lenders. We have an awesome uh, pool of private lenders, about five million bucks worth that we rotate around and use. And you know, that's that's what we do. Yeah, you know, calculate your numbers. We have a home flipping evaluator that we give to anybody that comes to the uh, home flipping workshop. Calculate your numbers and if your numbers work, because if you try to go get, you know, a million different options, you get what we call analysis paralysis. Like you get you get so many choices that you don't know which way to turn. So, you know, get a few, get two or three, four, but crunch the numbers, see if those numbers work, and if they do, make the deal. Uh, saw you. So the biggest fear is you don't have the right contractor to do the work. So I understand that fear, totally understand that, but I would tell you this, don't let any fears hold you back from starting because many times just by starting, you're, it's amazing what you will do when you have to do it, right? It's amazing that once you have a house under contract and you're ready to roll, it's amazing how the, the something about the laws of nature and just the forces sort of line up in your favor when you have to get something done because you start focusing on it and you start thinking about it on a regular basis. If you sit back and think to yourself, I'm scared I won't get one. Well, the truth is you'll, you'll, never, you'll never get one. If you keep telling yourself you're scared about it, well, then you'll be scared about it. But once you have a house and you have to have a contractor, the clock is ticking, you'll start meeting people out there and getting estimates. It may not be the best contractor or it might be. I don't know. But once you start the process, then you start. Right? Once you have a goal and you start and the money is ticking and you have the pressure on you, once that pressure's on you, now you're going to go find a contract because you have to. Yeah, and we teach our students how to interview them and how to kind of sort them out and, you know, what kind of questions to ask and the right kind of paperwork to have in place to make sure you're protected and contracts and all of that kind of stuff. So, yeah. you know, if you if you have the right system in place and the right track to follow, it it takes that fear away. For sure. Well, guys, listen, I've had a lot of fun with you guys today. Hopefully you had some fun. Sorry it took us a couple minutes to get on here today with these technical difficulties, but it is what it is. But you've been watching the uh, What's Your Flippin' Problem with Glenn and Amber, and we'd love to answer any questions you have. So every Thursday we're going to be here. Um, oh, I, I see that our team just put on there, share, share this live and tag a friend who needs to know about our free real estate Q&A. That's a good idea. Yeah. Whoever did that post, I'd like to see that. Uh, we should have had that at the beginning. That'd be good. But that's okay. We'll do it next time. So um, make sure we do that. So good. Guys, I appreciate you being here. And uh, again, Happy New Year to everybody. And we'll see you next Thursday. Will I be here next Thursday? Yes, next Thursday. Next Thursday live. And uh, I got to think we're going to be in Florida soon. Yeah, a couple weeks. I don't have to do this from Florida on my vacation. My well, gosh. Yeah, but we'll have sunshine in the background. That's true. That's true. We have a nice house. So that'll be good. So good. All right, cool. All right, guys. We'll see you all soon. Remember, thanks for watching. Uh, Glenn and Amber here with What's Your Flipping Problem? And we'll see you all next Thursday. Make good luck out there. Week. See ya.